Before we start, this video was sponsored by Opera GX. I've used Firefox for my web browser for like, basically forever. And to be honest, I don't really have any issues with Firefox. I think it works just fine. But Opera was like, hey, you should try Opera GX. And I was like, uh, sure, why not? I don't know what the GX stands for, but it sounds cool. And it turns out that Opera GX itself is also pretty cool and has some nice features. I mean, for example, the, uh, the GX control panel lets you limit the amount of CPU and RAM your browser uses while you're doing something like playing a game. It also has a network limiter to limit the network bandwidth used by Opera GX to help performance in games and streams. And hey, if you frequently use Discord and don't want to have it take up a whole tab or switch back and forth to the app, you can just pop in and check it on the Opera GX sidebar. And you can also use it for the GX player to play things like Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube Music directly right from that sidebar. Now that's convenient. And Opera GX is, of course, free, and even has its own mobile version. So if any of this sounded cool to you, you could check it out with the link in the description. It's not listed on the wiki, but this will also cause the rocket from the rocket jockey to always be red as well. And I assume the same thing probably happens for Demoman's chair and flask on the poop deck taunt, but I don't have it yet, so I guess we gotta save that for Demoman bugs. Well, I got the taunt, and hey, it works! So I guess now is as good of time as any to look at Demoman's other bugs. Alright, Bug Buster's Delman, let's go! The first Delman bug we have today is a classic. You know it, you love it. Crouch walking while holding an all-class melee weapon will cause a Delman's arm to bend at an unorthodox angle. Demo's arm will be bent in a very strange way when crouching and moving with an all-class melee weapon. It does straighten back out if you're actually swinging it though. And with the bottle, or anything that uses the bottle animations, it just looks normal the whole time. It's also worth noting that this bug does apply to the Persian Persuader as well, despite not being an all-class melee weapon, but it does use the all-class melee weapon animations. I'm sure you probably knew that, but I just thought I would point that out. For Delman's primary weapons, we'll start with the Lock and Load, which has one bug listed for it. And it claims that the grenades will bounce off certain dynamic surfaces, such as the moving walkways of Nucleus, as well as your teammates. The Lock and Load's bombs, of course, shatter on surfaces, but this claims they will bounce off certain things like the Nucleus walkways. These walkways can be pretty weird, and things like Jurati and Sticky Bombs will just roll right off them. But, uh, no, lock and load grenades seem to shatter like they should. Maybe there are some kind of other surfaces in the game that they bounce off of, but I could not get it to bounce off the walkways. As for bouncing off your teammates, well, yeah, they do that. After traveling a certain distance, projectiles will collide with friendly players, and they're supposed to do that. The stock grenade launchers do it, and so do the lock and loads. And even after they bounce off a teammate, they will still shatter on a surface. It's kind of funny to watch, but it's really not a bug. If a spy changes their disguise from a different class to a dumb man wearing the Alibaba's wee booties, their disguise weapon will be that of the previous disguise. So if, for example, a spy is disguised as a pyro with their flamethrower active, and then changes their disguise to a dumb man with the wee booties, you'll see that dumb man holding a flamethrower. And this works for any weapon. Dumb man with a minigun? Well, you could do that. A minigun? Yeah. Sniper rifle? Sure can. Even, even spy's own knife. But unless you're playing a randomizer or something, then this is a pretty dead giveaway that you're a spy. So, if you're playing spy, I wouldn't recommend disguising as a demo knight. The Alibaba's wee booties don't appear when inspecting them from the backpack menu. Much like many of soldiers' weapons, no, the booties do not appear when inspecting them from the backpack. If the loose cannon's cannonball is reflected by air blast, it does not deal mini crit damage. No, it does not. I even got what I'm pretty sure would have been considered a double donk, with both the cannonball and the explosion hitting the Dell man, but no mini crit and no double donk. Since the cannonball impact is considered explosive damage, it will give players on kill should their health be low enough. Yeah, I mean the cannonball itself doesn't explode on impact, but it can still cause an enemy to explode if the cannonball itself is what kills them. I guess, yeah, this could probably be considered a bug, but it's an exceptionally minor one. The loose cannon uses the same reload animation as the grenade launcher, resulting in it reloading downward instead of in the barrel. This is true, but is it really a bug? It's just a recycled animation that I'm sure they were well aware that they were using. The Iron Bomber does the same thing, and it's listed as a bug on that one's page too. Even the lock and load used to use the same reload animation for a long time before it was given its own unique one. So yeah, this is a lazy reuse of animations, but I don't think it could be considered a bug. This next one was making the rounds a while back when it was first discovered, so chances are you've probably heard of it. The Iron Bomber is slightly easier to land direct hits with compared to the other grenade launchers, because its projectile unintentionally uses a 118.75% wider collision bounds against players. Here are the actual size comparisons on the wiki. 
And it sounds bad, but it's actually not quite as noticeable when you're actually in a game. I tried to find an in-game example of just how relatively minor it ends up being. So here the grenade launcher and the iron bomber fired from the exact same spot in the exact same position. The grenade launcher's bomb just barely flies over the heavy's head, while the iron bomber's one actually connects. It's not a huge difference, but it's definitely something that needs to be fixed. It gives an unfair advantage over stock on a weapon that's already very similar to stock. So yeah, I don't like it. Due to how the model is rigged, the Iron Bomber's barrels don't spin during the firing animation. When I first saw this, I was actually wondering if it was ever intended to spin, and yeah, if you go to the weapon's original workshop page, the demonstration posted by the creator himself actually does show the barrel spinning when it's fired. That's pretty cool, and I think it actually looks a lot nicer that way, so it's kind of a shame it doesn't work in-game. The Sticky Bomb launcher has a bug that says that Sticky Bombs detonated manually will not leave explosion decals, but Sticky Bombs detonated automatically will. So it's like, if you detonate your stickies, they won't leave an explosion mark. No, that can't be true, right? Well, what do you know, I guess it is. Stickies, I guess, just don't normally leave marks on walls or floors when they explode. That is, unless it detonates automatically by placing more than 8 bombs. Then it will make a mark. Yeah, that's, that's actually pretty surprising to me. I guess in the heat of a game when there's so many other things exploding, it's pretty easy to miss. The Scottish Resistance cannot be used to destroy Sticky Bombs from the Sticky Jumper. The Scottish Resistance has a stat that lets its explosions destroy enemy Sticky Bombs. This will work against bombs from the Sticky Bomb Launcher, other Scottish Resistance Bombs, and Quickie Bomb Bombs, but it will not work against bombs from the Sticky Jumper. And this bug also applies to the Quickie Bomb Launcher as well, because it has the same stat. Scottish Resistance Sticky Bombs that automatically detonate after the 15th bomb is launched will not destroy enemy Sticky Bombs. Like we just talked about, explosions from the Scottish Resistance will normally destroy enemy stickies, but that apparently only works if you detonate them yourself. Because if you place a 15th sticky, causing the first one to explode, that explosion will not break enemy bombs. And just like the last bug, the exact same thing also applies to the Quickie Bomb Launcher too, but with the 9th bomb instead of the 15th. If the player disables Payload Cart Glow in the Advanced Multiplayer options running DX9, the Scottish Resistance sticky bombs will also stop glowing. Normally, you can see bombs placed with the Scottish Resistance through walls, but if you disable glow effects that also allow you to see the cart and intelligence through walls, it will also apply to the Scottish Resistance, making it so you can't see your own bombs. If the Scottish Resistance sticky bombs are detonated while moving, the kill feed will show the sticky bomb launcher kill icon instead. This one I've actually noticed myself a handful of times over the years, but because the Scottish Resistance tends to not be detonated mid-air, it's not all that common. But yeah, if the bomb is moving when it kills someone, it will have the stock Sticky Bomb Launcher kill icon. The Sticky Jumper's projectiles can detonate explosive environmental hazards if shot directly into them. This means things like pumpkin bombs on Halloween maps. And yes, it can. And then I was thinking, surely the Rocket Jumper does the same thing? Nope, Rocket Jumper rockets do not detonate pumpkin bombs. Only the Sticky Jumper does. But like the Rocket Jumper, when the Sticky Jumper is equipped, the user will not be able to pick up pickup objectives in player destruction maps. The description of the item only mentions the inability to pick up the Intelligence and Pastime Jack, but this does also apply to player destruction pickups as well. In Manpower Mode, the Quickie Bomb Launcher is unaffected by the Precision Power-Up. The Precision Power-Up has a whole list of effects, including Bullet Spread reduced by 90%, Distance Damage Falloff Immunity, Sniper Rifles have 2x scope speed, 3x charge speed, and do 2x the damage. Rockets and grenades travel 250% faster. Blast weapons have their clip size increased by 50%. Explosive projectiles have no radius damage falloff, and they have immunity to self-blast damage. It's worth noting that the blast weapon clip size increase does not include any of the Sticky Bomb launchers, and only works for the rocket launchers and grenade launchers. So the only effects of precision that would affect Stickies are falloff immunity, explosion radius damage falloff immunity, and no self-damage. All of which do apply to the Quickie Bomb Launcher, so that's busted. Also, I do find it kind of weird that because you're totally immune to your own explosions with this power-up, it means you can't sticky jump at all when you have it. I guess because you have a grappling hook, you don't really need to, but still, it is kind of an inconvenience. Now we move on to Devil Man's Shields, and I'm going to be using a picture of the Charge and Targe, but all these bugs do apply to the Splendid Screen and Tide Turner as well. And the first one says that the shields don't glow in the world view when crit boosted. In first person, they glow when you're crit boosted, but in third person, they do not. This may be unintentional, but personally, I think if the shield was glowing and Delman's other weapons were glowing when crit boosted, 
it'd become this kind of muddy mess of crit glow, and I think it would make the shield harder to see. Then, for just the charge and targe, the festive variant specifically actually does not glow when crit boosted even at first person. For some reason, only the wires on the Christmas lights do. While equipped with the shield, if a player spectates another player in first person mode while dead, upon respawning, the shield will appear where the spectated player was while he respawned. The shield will be non-interactive, and can be seen through walls, textures, and players. Uh, yeah, well, I'll just say that I was not able to recreate this. However, this is something I have seen multiple times in the past, but I've also not seen it in a very long time. The bug, as documented on the wiki, actually dates back to 2015. So it's very possible that it was fixed since then, but it's also possible that it only happens occasionally. I mean, there also used to be a similar bug with floating cosmetic items as well, but I'm pretty sure that's mostly been fixed too. I personally wasn't able to get it to happen, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's not true, so I guess we'll just say this one's unconfirmed. The Splendid Screen does actually have one unique bug, and it's just that it doesn't appear when inspecting it from the backpack menu. Oddly enough, the other two shields are visible when you try to inspect them, so it is just a Splendid Screen. The Scottish Handshake will break upon doing a charging melee strike, again inst, a surface, wall, or player with the tie turner, despite all attacks with the tie turner doing mini crits and not full crits. The bottle and the Scottish Handshake normally only break when hitting something with a critical hit. A mini crit doesn't have that same effect. And despite the tie turner only providing mini crits from the charge, it does actually cause the bottle to break. Well, it does for like a split second and then it goes back to normal. The model will change to the broken version for just a very brief moment before going back to normal. So what the bug claims is kinda true, it does kinda break, and the exact same thing actually applies to the regular bottle too. And this does only happen with a tie turner. It doesn't happen with mini crits from the other shields, and it doesn't happen when your mini crit boosted. It's like the bottle can't decide if it was supposed to crit at the end of the charge, or it was just supposed to mini crit. It's strange. Killing someone with the Eye Lander and switching to another melee weapon with the Resupply Locker will retain the Eye Effect and boosted Shield Bash damage on the Doman. In addition to the health and speed gained by each head from the Eye Lander, you'll also gain an Eye Glow Effect and additional Shield Bash damage. With no heads, the Shield Bash does 16 damage up close, and with 5 heads, it'll do 24. And when I swap to the bottle, I will in fact retain my Eye Glow Effect, and the Shield Bash does do 24. You do lose your health and speed though, so I'm not really sure why you'd want to do this. But you can do it, and it is something that has some effect. The Ulpool Caber may sometimes appear detonated when it's not. This can occur after hitting a friendly building, a pumpkin bomb, an enemy, or the resupply doors as they open. But the only one of those examples that I got to work consistently was the pumpkin bombs. If you hit a pumpkin bomb with your Caber, the bomb will explode and will also look like your Caber did too. When in fact, it actually didn't. Though I have personally gotten this to happen with the Caber by having the hit sound play against an enemy when you didn't actually hit them, and by hitting friendly buildings, but I couldn't recreate that for this video. And I very much doubt that's been fixed, but the pumpkin bomb was the easiest and most consistent way to recreate it. It seemed to work every time. The Ulapool Caber does not mini crit when used with Delman shields. And no, it doesn't. Oddly enough, the Caber can full crit at the end of a shield charge just fine, and it can even mini crit just fine if it's boosted by something like the buff banner. But it won't mini crit during a shield charge. This also means you won't get any kind of damage boost at all when used with a tie turner, so that kind of sucks. While explosive jumping with the Ulpool Caber as the active weapon, the Delman will say voice lines that should normally be played when scoring an explosive hit. If you play some stickies, pull out the Caber, and then sticky jump with the Caber active, Demo will say voice lines as if you hit someone with the Caber. Taunting with any action taunts that use props while using the Ulpool Caber will taunt with the Ulpool Caber instead. And yeah, any special taunt that spawns a prop weapon for Delman to use will just use the Caber instead. For some amusing results. The loadout screen shows a Delman wielding the Hafzadoichi with one hand instead of both hands. A spy disguised as a Delman wields the Hafzadoichi one handed as well. This is one that's been around since the weapon came out. In gameplay, Delman holds the Hafzadoichi like he would the Islander, but in the loadout menu, he holds it like the bottle. It's not a big deal, but it's still there. However, if a spy is disguised as a half Zatoichi Delman, he will hold it with one hand. That is, he would, if it would actually show up. When recording this video, I couldn't get that sword to be visible on a disguised spy at all. It worked with all of Delman's other melee weapons, but not the half Zatoichi. And even weirder, it didn't show up with the soldier disguise either. So that might just be totally broken. 
With the Persian Persuader, the charge duration can be extended by picking up ammo packs or by touching the resupply cabinets while charging and holding the Alt-Fire button as long as the pickup maxes out the charge bar. Here's an example of a regular charge without picking up ammo. And here's what happens when you do pick up ammo. Look at that! But it's worth noting that if you don't hold down the Alt-Fire button, it won't extend the charge even though the charge bar does visually refill. It also won't have an effect if the ammo you pick up doesn't fill your charge back to the max. If you pick up a small or medium ammo box too late into the charge, it won't extend it. So there are a few stipulations, but it definitely works. And that means you could do things like this. Who needs a half a second charge increase when you can just extend it indefinitely? Eat your heart out, Clade! But that previous bug does come with a downside. Collecting an ammo pack while charging resets the damage bonus meter, resulting in not getting the set bonus that would be granted for charging the same amount of time without picking up the ammo pack. This means that if you're nearing the end of your charge and should get a full crit, but also pick up an ammo box, it'll reset to a mini crit or no bonus at all. And finally, we have some Delman Achievement bugs. And he has quite a few. The first one says that the Delman Achievement Second Eye can sometimes be earned with the Sticky Jumper. That achievement is earned for providing an enemy player with a freeze cam of you shaking your rump. Just meaning taunting them with the Scottish Resistance. This bug does say sometimes, but I must have tested this with the Sticky Jumper well over 15 times and I never got it. And with no actual proof that this can happen, I'm just gonna say it's busted. It's possible to get the achievement Scotch Tap twice with the Half Zatoichi. That achievement is for glorying in the slaughter of your enemies with the Islander. And that just means an Islander taunt kill. Now you can actually get Scotch Tap with any sword item that uses a Decapitation Taunt. And I guess if you're getting picky, you could consider that a bug, since the description does specifically say the Islander. But as for what this one says, no. If you already have the achievement, you can't get it a second time with Half Zatoichi. As the Highland Fling achievement relies on horizontal distance traveled, it can be earned by Sticky Jumping just as the round ends. Highland Fling is earned for Sticky Jumping a really long way. But, uh, I don't really know what this bug is trying to say. Uh, I mean, obviously, if you perform the right requirements right as the round ends, you'll get it. I don't think that's a bug. But I also don't think that's what it's trying to say. I don't really know what the end of the round has to do with anything. I thought that maybe it was saying it counted the distance from being teleported back to spawn after the round ends, but that didn't seem to work. So, yeah, I really don't know what it means. Achievements that require the decapitation of enemies, such as Shorn Connery and There Could Be Only One, cannot be obtained with a decapitation taunt. Shorn Connery is for decapitating a cloaked spy, and There Could Be Only One is for decapitating your nemesis. Both of which normally just require the target to be decapitated with a sword weapon. But if you kill them with a sword taunt, it won't work, despite taking their head off, and despite the name of the taunt literally being decapitation. Players can earn the achievement U-Turn when killing an enemy behind a wall with a sticky bomb. U-Turn is normally earned for killing an enemy that you couldn't see at the beginning of your charge. And this says that you could get it by killing an enemy behind a wall with a sticky. I mean, that's, that's incredibly broad. There's walls everywhere. If all it takes is just being behind a wall, then no, it's not true. Players can also earn the achievement U-Turn by charging at point-blank range. No, you can't. The Lock and Load, Loose Cannon, and Iron Bomber do not count towards the achievement Glass Goned. Glass Goned is earned for killing 25 scouts and pyros with the Grenade Launcher. And it does say Grenade Launcher, but that would usually mean any type of Grenade Launcher and not just stock but no one lockable grenade launcher will contribute to this achievement. While the achievement Bloody Mary specifies that a smiley face must be shown, performing any taunt while holding any weapon able to perform that taunt will earn the achievement. So that achievement is normally earned for taunting someone with a grenade launcher taunt, but if your grenade launcher is active and you taunt them with any other taunt, like the high five for example, you'll still get the achievement. Robbed Royal can be achieved with a quickie bomb launcher. Robbed Royal is normally gotten for destroying 100 enemy Sticky Bombs with the Scottish Resistance. And yeah, you can get it with the Quickie Bomb Launcher. But that seems fair to me, they could both destroy Stickies. I mean, at this point, I think I would rather have them just update the description to say the Scottish Resistance or the Quickie Bomb Launcher, rather than just restricting it to one. And that's the last one. Those were Delman's bugs. And you know what? Ultimately, he's not really that buggy of a class. Most of his were pretty minor. I mean, a few effects gameplay, like the Oolpool Caver Mini Crit one and the Iron Bomber hitbox, but a lot of them are just minor visual inconsistencies. So Delman made out pretty okay here. But will the next class do as well? And who do you want to see next? Right now we have Pyro, Heavy, Engineer, and Sniper left for the main part of this series. So you can comment on who you want to see next. 
Alright, I guess that's it. So, thanks for watching, and a special thanks to my patrons like Varric, Captain Forex, Egox, Dex, Zero Attention, Probably Vinegar, Caponicus, Kelso the Pirate, Pilsman's Fox, Kybrid96, Scout with a Name, Glump, Salt God, Lavi, Firefox, Tope, and Man of Jazz. Okay, peace out, dogs.